Never a dull moment in the crypto and digital asset market. I, <laughs> I have to tell you, this has been uh, quite an entertaining day. And uh, if you weren't aware, about 30 minutes ago or so, the SEC put out a tweet that said that uh, the Bitcoin ETF had been approved. And I was like, oh, well, that's great. Everybody's going to be really happy about that. And our bags are going to pump. It's going to be fantastic. And then 20 minutes ago, uh, this happened. So this is, and I don't even know what's real anymore because the SEC is always saying, hey, if you want the official information, you have to go to the SEC account. The SEC account was apparently hacked, but Gary, who is protecting us harder, but he can't protect, you know, unfortunately his agency's Twitter account, which does say something about the person, the top cop in charge. Uh, he says, hey, the SEC Twitter account, it was compromised and an unauthorized tweet was posted. The SEC has not approved the listing and trading a spot Bitcoin exchange traded products, which I think we all know already. And I'm like, well, you know, that's just how it is. And uh, I got, I got to tell you, I was all, I was, I was just about to send a message to Simon and be like, hey man, when do you want me to come on the show? Don't have to do that yet. But we'll see how it all happens. And then the SEC, because I'm like, well, maybe Gary's account was hacked. Who the hell knows any anything anymore, right? I mean, up is down, left is right. No one knows all these AI generated nonsense. And then who knows what that could have been. So here we are. But the SEC does say, hey, the SEC Gov X account was compromised and none other is posted. Posted. We have not approved. So I don't know. I mean, it looks like it hasn't been approved, but who knows? I mean, in 20 minutes, they say the same the exact opposite. You know what? Someone else hacked us. <laughs> it, was, it was approved. So I don't know what's going to happen. It's, it is inevitable. It's just how it is. But I have to tell you, just between us, whoever did this hack, probably the best, the best joke I've heard in I don't know how long. Now, unfortunately, this could affect a lot of people, if you think about it, because who knows what that could have what could have happened with uh, longs and shorts and liquidations and things like that. It could be very dangerous in this situation. And might I say, it might have been manipulated. Who knows? But I'm not going to make assumptions, although this channel is for entertainment purposes, so who cares? <clears throat> but I saw upon this quite funny. Adam Beck comes out and says, hey, careful what you read on the internet. The best source of information about the SEC is the SEC. Whoopsie. And I can tell that <clears throat> this message from a lot of people were not happy. Panda Pie, not happy at all. What an S show. Absolute garbage. At least we can be sure someone did a lot of money on our heads. Thanks, SEC Gary and gov for continuous effort to protect investors thank you for this utter joke i gotta tell you panda pie has a great uh, a great point there i mean that whole, that's their whole job right to make sure that they are there to protect the investor unfortunately so far uh gary hasn't done much protecting he's done oh i would say a little i would say something like this He's protected us against staking with Kraken. That was a good one. Good job, Gary. You, you did it. You did it, buddy. Um, the bank collapses, not really. BlockFi, Sam, who you met with multiple times. That didn't happen. Celsius, uh, not really too much. But man, and you almost were able to keep the Twitter account up. Now, I don't want to, I don't want to kick a man when he's down. And I really shouldn't. I'm really being a jerk at this point. It's just, I thought it was funny. And that's it. So um, <laughs> I don't know what else you can say here. I know people are pretty ticked off because they were waiting for it, waiting for it and it happened. And it was like, it's like you explode, but then you have to bottle everything back up inside. Don't worry, everybody. Like even me, and I'm not 100% sure it's going to be approved. It's inevitable anyhow. It does. It really is. And I got to tell you, I felt more calm after there was this, this, um, let me show you. There was this interview with Preston Pish, and you guys have to follow him. Fascinating. And when he lays these things out, I mean, it doesn't matter if we, if we get this ETF tomorrow or in March or in 2025. The reality is, it doesn't really matter because things will do things will just work out with the crypto and digital asset and mostly Bitcoin market. Man, I post a lot. Ah, this is it right here. Just listen to this. I mean, if you're ever like, kind of like feeling, damn it, I wish it could happen now and this, and just listen to this. This is really good. Let me, uh, hold on. 
Let me share my screen or not. So listen to this when you're, when you're feeling kind of kind of down a little bit. But I got, again, I got to tell you, what a fantastic joke. Whoever hacked the SEC Twitter account, mwah, perfect. Anyhow, if you're feeling bad, feeling down, don't worry. It'll be okay. Listen to this. Great, great piece by Preston. Listen to this portfolio construction. You can, because Bitcoin operates in four-year periods of time. First of all, that's Preston's real tone and cadence. He just talks super fast. Sorry. I'm with the having event. Okay. I I believe that if somebody's buying Bitcoin and holding it for four years plus, it's an investment. I think anything under four years gets more speculative, especially if you start going under a year. So let's just say you take any four-year holding period over the last, since, since Bitcoin had a price, and you compare that to the S&P 500, but you do it by adjusting your sizing like they preach in business school, right? So listen to these two different portfolios. Portfolio one is a 2% allocation to Bitcoin, 98% cash. And you compare it to 100% allocation. The second portfolio would be 100% allocation to the S&P 500. Your performance is better with the 2% Bitcoin allocation. Over You can pick the four-year period of time. It doesn't matter if you pick a top and you go back four years or you pick a bottom and you go back four years or somewhere in between. You can pick any four-year period you want in Bitcoin's history okay, and compare that to a four-year period in the S&P 500. The performance is going to be higher, around 50 to 80% annualized compound annual growth rate with a 2%. Okay. And your volatility is only 1.4% annualized. Okay. It's similar to the S and P 500. You're about a 50% annualized performance with the S and P hundred percent and the S and P 500, but your annual volatility is 20%, which is 14 times higher than a 2% allocation in Bitcoin. I think this is so important for portfolio construction going into 2024 and into the future. And I think. Yeah. I just want to share that with everybody. Cause I know like you're probably not too happy right now, you know, with, the ETF thing and approved, maybe it gets approved tomorrow. Again, everything's inevitable. I mean, for me, I just look at them like, well, you know, tomorrow, like I have Coinbase and the, and the DCA buy goes off regardless of if there is an ETF or not. So to me, I just think to myself, I'm like, well, I mean, there's only so much you can do. And uh, this was just honestly, just a fantastic, well played, well played joke. Um, but again, I understand, I, I, am reading the comments and I can see a lot that people say, you know, a lot of Rob, you understand a lot of longs and a lot of shorts got wrecked and I'm not oblivious to that fact. It is a shame. It is a shame. And that's why I know like people laugh sometimes when we talk about, well, it's dollar cost average. I do these things. These are the, these are the days for, these are the days of why I do this. I'm not here to get rich quick. I'm here to get rich slow. Eh, I'm doing okay. So anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section.